First one we're going to look at is a bright positive point in this game, and it's how hard forechecking helped create some chances. Now, this play is going to develop pretty normally. Puck's coming down our end of the ice. Keep doing our normal play of trying to get that puck up the boards. Now, we're going to see the turnover coming up that starts moving the puck up the ice for us. There it is. Shots missed. Now, Matthew's playing the puck up the boards. Goes to their defender. He can't control, and he starts chasing back after the puck. Now, you see Adam Alberga there along the boards. I'm going to rewind it and play it a little slower. You'll see because of his hard pressure on him, he has no pass to middle of the ice. He's forced to just throw it back up the boards, and it's a turnover to Mason. Adam's hard forecheck causes one turnover there. Now the play is going to run a little bit more. Coming down to the ice again. Their defenseman has it. And again, a hard forecheck on their defender with the puck. We're going to wind it back again. Adam Alberga coming down hard on him. Putting pressure on him causes him to just dump it up the boards. Again, one of the wingers picks it up, gets it deep. After getting it deep, Oscar and Adam both go hard to the net. Mason picks it up behind, passes it in front. Oscar with the shot, rebound to Adam. Goal, and it's 1-1. We're looking real nice. Now we're going to take a look at some back-checking forwards and how a breakdown led to a goal against right after that last goal. So here we have our face-off. This is immediately after the goal we just scored. Now the face-off is going to go pretty normal. Turn over in the neutral zone. Now we're looking pretty good. They have the puck, but we're looking good. We froze it right here. You can see we have five white shirts all around the puck carrier. We're okay. Suddenly we roll it forward. All those white shirts are gone, and there's three red ones heading to the net. So let's let's rewind to that still frame we had. Now we're gonna first person we're gonna take a look at is Andy. You can see Andy right next to the puck. He just made a play on it to push it over there. He's still with it. He's got a chance to stay with this man and get that puck away, but he drops off. Drops off along the blue line. He's moving into his position for the breakout. He's anticipating the turnover coming and he wants to get ready to go up the ice. A little bit too early, you gotta keep playing defense. Next we're gonna take a look at Eric, right behind the Duffield player. He's in a position to make a play too. Reach in, get a stick on, get a stick lift, but you can see he starts gliding. He stops moving his feet, the back check kinda stops, and by the time the goal is scored he's about 10 feet behind the play. You gotta keep skating back and getting to the net all the way. Now we're gonna take a look at some defensive positioning on a penalty kill that led to a goal against. Now the first thing you need to notice as we start this clip is how far back from the play Thomas is. There's a whole neutral zone of ice between him and the puck right now and that's too much space. The opposing player has too much room to make decisions. As the puck starts coming towards Thomas, Thomas needs to own the middle of the ice. He needs to own that center area to force the puck carrier up the boards. Because he's so close to the boards, the puck carrier sees the middle of the ice wide open, skates for it, the pass becomes wide open. Thomas goes, does a Good job trying to recover, but it's too late at that point. The play is broken down. Now we're going to take a look at Owen on the left, his partner in this same play. And right now Owen's in a pretty good position. He's far up the ice. He's not too far back. He's got his man in front of him, the right winger. But as the puck starts coming up the board, you can see Owen starts puck watching. He's only got eyes for the puck right now. He's coming over to Thomas' side. He makes his turn. And now look at the two of the defensemen right on top of each other. Owen's too far over on the right, and that's his man that was open that just got the pass. His man makes a beautiful pass to the middle, and it's a goal against. Now we're going to take a look at some forwards in the defensive zone and how their positioning and scramble causes a very good chance against for Duffield that luckily didn't end in a goal. Now to start the play, we see all the forwards backchecking hard. They're playing well. Nate plays the man in the corner. He's doing well. But Aiden's coming very far over on the other side. Two wingers in the same spot, and because they're both there, no one's there to help the puck get out of the blue line. Now Aiden's up where he needs to be, and he's playing well. But the forecheck has been sustained. Now we round it back. You can see Makai down here is the center in this line. He's doing his job. He's backing up the puck in the corner. He's playing his support role. He's doing well. Now that the puck's headed back down low, though, he needs to get back. And you can see he stays high, floating up around the blue line. Because he's not getting back to the front of the net right now, Kalen is stuck with two red shirts in front. She doesn't know how to play both of them because she doesn't have four arms. And because of that, they get a few chances against. If Makai is back down low hard, covering that pass out front, it's just cleared into the corner and the period ends with no chance against. Now we're going to take a little bit of some examples of why we need to hit the head man. Get the head up and make the pass. Eric's stick handling out of our zone here late in the second period. Got past three men. He's got two defensemen in front of him. Now Andy's ahead. If he makes that pass, Andy's gone. Pass the D. Eric doesn't make the pass, and he still has to deal with those two defensemen. They t get on him, he turns the puck over, and there's no chance against. 
Now we're going to hit the fast forward button because later in the same shift we have an example of how it goes perfectly. Almost there, almost there, here we go. Now, Andy's fighting for the puck along the boards. He's working against their defenseman, their winger. He gets control of the puck, sees Eric ahead of him, hits him with the pass. Hits the head man. Eric's only got one man to beat, and he gets our best chance against of the period. And he gets a great chance there, too. We can see how head manning the puck gets you past those layers of defense, gets you past players, and gets you chances. All right, now we're going to look at every single face-off from our game against Duffield. Now, generally, we take two different kinds of face-offs. We do the ones where we push it forward and try to go through the center's legs, and we do the ones where we try to draw it back, win possession, and tie up the center. Watch those records down in the bottom right. For wins, losses, and ties. It's going to tell you whether or not we got possession, lost possession, or it resulted in a scramble. Right to the end of the video. <laughs> Thank you. 